Hey, 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 everybody, praise the Lord, and God bless you. You are in tune to another wonderful rendition of Showers of Glory here in the wonderful city of Detroit. Showers of Glory, of course, is an outreach arm of Zion City International Kingdom Church of Deliverance, where I am the wonderful, handsome, glorious pastor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey Amen. It's good to see everybody tonight. Glad you're online during this time of consecration. And uh, as you might be able to tell, I am on the floor. Yes, I am. I'm not at my desk in the office tonight. I'm on the floor in the living room. And uh, we're teaching on the floor. Hey Amen. We're coming from the low place tonight. Hey Amen. But I uh, wanted to say God bless you. And to all of my Zion City Cyber Church members and all of our supporters and partners and friends, well wishes, we thank you tonight for being with us. What a wonderful time. No better time to be in the kingdom. Who would have known? I mean, for real. Jesus died on the cross so that I could sit here on my living room floor with my candle in front of me and transmit the gospel across the world praise the lord i admire you all out there who are in the field and getting the gospel out well let's get right into the teaching tonight of course we want to bring to you our announcements so i want you to be reminded uh that uh, zion city is on consecration we are fasting and for those of our members who uh i hope you made it through your first day today <laughs> Amen. Uh, from 12 noon to 6, we are having water only every day. And uh, every day we are on the um, prayer call at 1030 in the morning. I expect to hear all of your lovely voices. Amen. Get yourselves up, brush your teeth, and get on the line. Praise the Lord. And uh, Saturday will be the last prayer call for that week. And um, Sunday afternoon, I was going to say Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, we will be at the Tabernacle for the beginning of our uh, church anniversary celebration. Zion is three years old. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Zion. Amen. Zion is three years old. We started off in the year 2012. Amen. Right after we uh, stepped out of our assignment with Landmark Temple, the Lord released us. And uh, here we are, 2015, still going. And it's been nothing but the hand of God. It's marvelous in my eyes. I'm grateful and I will not complain. So Sunday uh, begins the beginning, is the beginning rather, of our anniversary celebration at 7 p.m. And uh, Bishop Russell will be along with many of our families and friends and uh, all of Zion City will be there to celebrate and just feast on a time in his presence. We're asking God to come among us. And during this time uh, where we're asking God to come among us, we want to fellowship and feast on his presence and carry his power back out to those who need it. Uh, October the, October the uh, 10th, uh, True Rock will be with us along with many of our other singers and friends and uh, the Spencer sisters and Sean Harden, AFG Mime, and whew, uh, Bishop Marcus and Set Free. Will be with us it's gonna get packed out in there pretty quick so you better come on around all right and so those are our announcements announcements rather govern yourselves accordingly and tonight we want to get right into our text now just before i do that though i want to say shouts out hallelujah shouts out to two more two two which worth camera at right there two more uh, of our newest members uh, Princess Alicia uh, Cuevas, I'm sorry, Cuevas, and uh, Princess Dora Cunningham just united with Zion today. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Nothing the devil can do about it. Amen. We covered these new babies in the blood of Jesus from top to bottom and from side to side. Amen. From the root to the foundation. The blood of Jesus be applied over their homes, over their children. Excuse me, let me sit up right here. Over their children uh, and over uh, their finances. Amen. Uh, wait a minute, it's getting a bit hot in here. 
Um, Jonathan, come hit the mode button on here. Ooh wee. No, you know what? Never mind. Come turn this fan on. Praise the Lord. Whew, I just noticed it was getting stuffy. <laughs> Amen. But uh, for those of you that are coming online tonight, uh, go ahead and let us know that you're online. I'm looking here in the chat box, and uh, we're going to get started with that. Okay, so praise the Lord to all of our new members. Thank God for you. Uh, we don't take church membership lightly. This is not just something where your name just goes on a roll with a whole bunch of other folks. We consider it a privilege. We consider it an honor. Um, and we're thankful because it means God has sent you this way. The Holy Ghost has somehow captivated your heart. You hear me? That you would want to be a part of uh, this magnanimous piece of the will of God. I am happy to be your pastor. Amen. Lady Davis is always happy to be your mother in Zion. And uh, we send our love out to you. And we look forward to a lifetime of fellowship with you in the body of Christ. Love you so much. Well, today on the prayer call, and we're not going to be long tonight, but today on the prayer call, we started talking about uh, trusting God with our lives. And we hit so many points um, while we were in Ephesians 6. 6 and 10 and uh, I want to kind of go back over well actually we left off uh, at the breastplate <laughs> amen God did a healing of our hearts amen about that breastplate the Holy Ghost just brought out so many points concerning the breastplate of righteousness Amen. For some reason, I kept wanting to call it the blessed plate, <laughs> but it is the breast plate. Amen. And God brought out so many points about that breastplate, how it protects our heart and how it protects, amen, uh, our ability to give. You know, that, that breast plate, and we're going to go to the scripture in a minute, but that breast plate is what protects the chest. It protects the breasts. It protects the heart. It protects the rib cage that the heart is lodged under. Okay, and whenever a dart or an arrow is thrown at a soldier with his breastplate on, uh, that breastplate will protect that soldier, uh, be it male or female, that will protect that soldier, their heart from getting hit. Okay, it will protect your ability to give. Breasts represent the ability to give. And not only the ability to give, but it represents the ability to give life. All right? Uh, the breast is known, especially on the woman, for giving milk. God himself is called the many-breasted one, the large-breasted one. Okay? So, uh, Satan, if you are caught without your breastplate on, the breastplate of righteousness, Satan wants to hinder your ability to give and give life from your heart. Out of your heart flow the issues, right, of life, okay? So when Satan tries to give you a heart attack, he's trying to not only kill you, but if he can't kill you, he's trying to hinder your ability to give life. For out of your heart flows the issues of life. He's trying to hinder your ability to give life to other people. Or to be able to give, period. Giving comes from the heart. For God so loved. Love flows from the heart. Doesn't flow from the flesh. Mm -mm. Love flows from the heart. Okay? Out of your heart comes the... And out of your mouth comes the issues of life. But the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if the enemy attacks your heart and there's bitterness in your heart, it comes up through your mouth. All right? So those of you that are joining online and if you were with us this morning, you heard that teaching online. And of course, if you want to get it, you want to go back and hear it again, all you have to do 
is dial 712-775-7031. 31 and hit the meeting ID. A meeting ID is the same, 851-037-836, pound, and you go back and hear that teaching all over again. But glory be to God. So, you know, that that breastplate, as a matter of fact, let's go on back to that scripture because I got some more points I want to get to. Glory be to God. Let's go on back to that scripture and we'll hit that right quick. And uh, I'll endeavor not to stay before you long night, praise the Lord. But I want you to pray for every member, amen, that comes online tonight and that's come inside of this fellowship with us. Pray for them. Let's uphold them. Let's keep them together online. Amen. Uh, let's go back to Ephesians. Ephesians 6. In the name of Jesus, we come against every hindrance that will keep every child of God from coming online tonight. We bind up every hindrance, in every hindrance in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, teach your people what you would want them to know and have your way. In Jesus name the blood of Jesus be on this equipment and on the ears of those that are sent to hear uh, what your spirit is saying For those that would have an ear let them hear what your spirit is saying I, uh, here it is Ephesians 6 and 10 in conclusion be strong in the Lord be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him the strength which his boundless might provides watch this Put on the whole armor of God, all right, which you mean that you may be able to stand within the evil of the day, having done all the stand, all right? So now I want to get back to that breastplate. That's why I'm kind of rushing through it. Um, yeah, forgive me, my little device is acting crazy here. Okay. I don't know what's going on with this thing. Um, but I need to get to that verse that talks about the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, this is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to start my phone over. Praise the Lord. The Bible talks about the breastplate of righteousness, putting on the belt. First of all, we started out with truth. Okay, we started out putting on that armor. And we're starting out, the Bible says the first thing you have to do when you're putting on the armor is tighten your belt with truth. Gird, gird your loins with truth. Tightening the belt of truth. Okay? And then it talked about uh, the other parts of the armor and then it got down to the breastplate. Okay? So now that breastplate, as I said before, is what protects the heart. A whole lot of people, and I said this morning, a whole lot of people in the body of Christ are falling away and have fallen off. Whenever you see somebody just fell off all of a sudden, what happened to them is, spiritually, they had a heart attack. It's the same thing that you see with somebody, um, you know, in the natural, most times if they have a massive coronary, they just pass out. They just black out. They just fall to the floor. And we pray that none of that happens to none of y'all. Amen. Praise the Lord. But number one, it comes... Uh, from a lot of stress on the heart and the same way it is in the natural is the same way it is in the spirit there are so many of you that have endured a bunch of stress in the church and with life and all that kind of stuff you have endured so much stress that spiritually you have passed out you have given up you have quit and it is the will of the Holy Ghost to restore your heart. It's not the will of God for you to give up, quit, pass out. What is it? Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, the Amplified said, if you don't give up, quit, and pass out, you will reap if you don't faint, if you don't give up, quit, and pass out. But many of the saints are passing out because... Uh, of all the foolishness that's going on in church. Unfortunately, I got to hit it because there's so much drama going on in the house of God and it ain't supposed to be. It's not supposed to be all of this drama going on in the house of God. People got enough problems coming in from the world. They don't need more problems coming in from the church. Now, granted, 
where there is people, <laughs> there's mess, right? Okay? But that's the reason why we hit the altar. Uh-oh. I done hit a cord up in there. That's the reason why we hit the altar. We need to stay in a place of prayer. The more that God begins to bless us, the further you have to go down on your knees to keep your mind from jumping the fence on you, to keep your flesh, amen, from going all off on the deep end. I appreciate God. You know, there have been times I've asked God, okay, well, you know, Lord, please let the church grow. Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord, please. Lord, please let this happen. God, please let this happen. God, please let this happen. All right? And I realized that when he lets it happen, I had to stay on my face. Because the minute God begins to bless you, it is so easy. As I heard one preacher say tonight, it is so easy to fall into a place of lethargy. It's so easy to fall into a place where you become at ease in Zion. And a lot, some of us, and some of you watching, have become at ease in Zion. Life has gotten pretty comfortable for you. Amen. Amen. And, you, and, I, and I'm not trying to suggest that, you know, you have to be at war all the time and that, you know, there's going to come one trial after another. No, 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 no. It shouldn't be like that. But I do know. For those of us who are in true warfare, oh, 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 amen, there's always something in front of us that's keeping us at war, that's keeping us at warfare, amen, and keeping us on our knees, should I say, okay? So what you don't want to do is get so comfortable and so lax that you stop praying. You know what? It ain't so much the, the bad times that you got to worry about praying. Even the devil knows you're going to pray when stuff gets terrible. You know, when stuff gets tough and when things get terrible. Even the devil knows you're going to pray then. What he's expecting you to do is to fall off when it gets good. Sadly, unfortunately, most of us do. It's just the truth. Sadly, unfortunately, most of us do. Most of us fall off when times get easy. Amen. After we've just come out of a battle. Amen. We sit down and we chill. <laughs> Amen. And we stop praying. And spiritually, we fall asleep. And the Bible says it is when that good men sleep. While good men slept, the enemy creeps in and he sows tears. The boogie ain't got guts enough to do it in front of your face. He waits till you fall asleep, waits till you're unconscious, waits till you've given up and passed out. And he sends subtle attacks. He sends people that act like Christians. He sends people that act saved. They know how to, hey, glory, he, ha ha. They know how to jerk. They even know, a lot, they even know how to lay hands. Some of them even know how to prophesy. You got to watch. As Medea said, you got to watch <laughs> because it's not what they do. It is the true spirit that they do it in. You got to watch the truth of the spirit. The Bible says that this kind of work has to be done. Worship has to be done in spirit and in truth. If someone begins to generate what looks like an atmosphere of worship, okay, but, but it looks like worship. It sounds like worship, but the doctrine behind what they're doing is not biblical and it's not coming from the Holy Ghost, and it is not the spirit of truth. Uh-huh. Okay. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There is a such thing as your lifestyle being connected to your anointing and the level of the presence of God in your life. You want to see power in your life, you have got to live holy. I know there's a lot of teaching that's going around today, but I will say this, you will not experience God's best for you while you are doing whatever the heck you want to do and not caring what God thinks. God will not bless that attitude. Yes, he's loving. Yes, he is forgiving. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. He is rich in mercy, but he is also 
holy. You know, that's another reason. Let me stay on this breastplate for a little bit longer. Amen. That when, when That's another reason why saints find themselves in the strangest of places. When you find yourself having a spiritual heart attack, you start breaking your own rules. You know that? Some of y'all can't quit cussing. <laughs> Let me stop right there for a minute. Some of y'all can't stop. Can't stop cussing. You don't know why you're cussing. Why? It's because you're stressed out. Your heart is stressed, is stressed out in the spirit. Glory to God. Things are stressing you out so bad. Every time you open your mouth, it's bubba, 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 bubba. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. <laughs> I can't say what you say. <laughs> what the this? What the that? Da, 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 da. Amen. Every time you turn around, something's going on. Got to watch that. Satan is trying to give you a heart attack. He's attacking your heart. And he is slowly trying to wear you out. He's got demons on assignment trying to wear you out. And you've got to be careful that you don't let him wear you out. Because he wants you to give up, quit, faint, and pass out before your day of reaping. And when your day of reaping comes, he wants you to get so comfortable that you get lethargic, that you stop praying, that you get comfortable, you start laying at ease and saying, oh, it's all right now. No, 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 no. After you win the victory, you got to keep the soldiers on the wall. You got to keep the soldiers on the wall. Let's get back to this scripture here right quick. We've only got just a few minutes. We're not going to stay on long tonight. Amen. Because we got to be back on the line tomorrow. So, Pastor, we're not going to be on line long tonight. Amen. But we want to pray with you. Let's go back to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Okay. Let's finish this out. You know, I'm going to have to fix this little... Uh, I don't know what this thing is doing. So now, it looks like I might just have to, because I don't know what this thing is doing here. Lord Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. This thing wants that cuckoo. Um, I'm trying to get this. This, this thing doesn't want to... Didn't do one do. Oh well. Praise the Lord. Alright. I guess we'll have to make it off of memory tonight. Okay. So have that breastplate. Go up there. As a matter of fact, you go back and study it. Ephesians 6 and 10. Uh, all the way down to, I think, about the 13th or the 14th verse. And study that breastplate out. I want you to study, do a study on that armor, okay, and how and how that breastplate protects the chest, protects the rib cage, protects the heart. But my, many of the saints of God are falling away because their heart is unprotected. And as long as Satan can keep grabbing at your heart, because you don't have your breastplate on, the Bible says there's there's the there's the gospel of peace which are your shoes, there's the sword of the spirit, and there is the breastplate of righteousness. Moral living, holy living, clean living, having a right stand and a right relationship with God, right standing with God. That breastplate is made of your right standing with God, your right relationship with Him, and everything else flows out of that. If your relationship with God is off, your breastplate is off. And when your breastplate is off, glory be to God, you've got problems. You are vulnerable and open for attack. When your breastplate is off, when your position with God is in question, you are in trouble. I'm watching people now and it's 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 a it's a heart tugger because there are many of you and I thank God that the Lord is sending us some 
let me say this as we get ready to go off the air. I told you not to be on long tonight. Let me say this as I get ready to go off the air. Those of you that are having trouble making the decision to get into a church, don't stay there long. When your ability to worship is hampered and impaired for whatever reason, Satan has got the upper hand on you. You are uncovered. And you need, as old, old folks say, you get somewhere and set out. You need to get under a covering. It is not a good place to be. It is not, I repeat, it is not a good place to be. And I'm watching people of God out of order, still going to church, still visiting, but not under a covering. Sometimes for different reasons, things have happened. They've been hurt in the church. But let me remind you of something, child of God. God didn't do anything to you. If God didn't do nothing to you, that wasn't his fault. Jesus Christ is a cool guy. Unfortunately, sometimes his PR people act up. Praise the Lord. But you are still held responsible. I know that some of y'all, you know, you've fallen out of church because things have happened and people stabbed you in the back and you had church hurt. But the word of God still stands. You have got to get back up and put your breastplate back on and get your rump back in the house of God. I'm sending this word out to my people. The Lord told me to tell you, don't stand in the place of limbo any longer because you are holding up your blessings. The anointing and the power of God cannot flow to you because you are out of order. Seek God on where you're supposed to be and make a choice today. Get it together now. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of this prophet from God. Hear this prophet of God. Get your worship life back in order. If you've been out of church for too long, get back in a church. Unite with a body. Well, I don't know if I trust anybody. Forget about what you trust. This is about what God said. Get where God, you know, I don't know what it is. Stay in prayer until you find out. Let me tell you something. Some of you word, I know some of you word about where if I get there and it's not the right church or it's not the right. Listen, no effort to obey God will ever go unrewarded. If you join a church and it's not the right one for you, the Lord will reveal it. But if they're preaching Jesus and if they're preaching holiness and they believe in the fullness of the spirit, get there. I mean, you're not crazy. You know what holiness is all about. Get to it. The Lord says your blessings are being held up because your worship life is out of order. Your breastplate is off. And you are open to more deception, especially with that breastplate off. Okay? Now, that, that helmet deals, I believe, with peace. The shoes deal with the gospel. The sword deals with the spirit. But that breastplate deals with your heart. And when your worship life is out of order because you've had a heart attack and you've fallen out with people in the church and you've fallen out with the pastor and you fell out because of this and you fell out because of that, you fell out. Okay, now God has resurrected you. He's given you CPR. You're back to life again. The guy, the, the guy said, I've come back to life. You're back to life again. Now, get back to work in the house of God. Get back in the house of God. Get covered again. Get your worship life back in order. And don't give me that old bull crap about I can, I can worship at home. Whatever. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as is the manner of of some is, as a matter of some is, don't do that. 
There's a reason why the called out church, the believers, the ecclesia, come together for fellowship and for strength. You are not going to find a perfect church. Don't go back to church expecting not to get hurt. Where there's people, there's mess. You want to stay to yourself? Fine. Go there, get the word, get the praise and worship, and then go home. You're not ready to fellowship? Fine. You're not ready to fellowship. But go get the word, get the praise, get the notes, get a CD, and be out. You ain't ready to do no whole bunch of fellowship? Okay, fine. Don't be mean to nobody. Just say praise the Lord, hello, and be out. Ask the Lord to bless you and teach you all over again how to fellowship. Amen. But praise the Lord. Get your butts back in the house of God. Stop all this fooling around. Because your blessings are being held up. Glory be to Shatana Mahaya. Glory be to Jesus. Well, I got to go. I told you we're going to be online like uh, long tonight. I love you. Remember to meet us tomorrow morning on the prayer line, on the prayer line, amen, on the prayer line at 1030 in the morning. We want to see every Zion City member, amen, participant, partner, and supporter. We want to hear your voice on the line tomorrow morning. Pray for our new members that have just joined and pray for our ministry to Uganda, Africa, amen. Pray for our ministry to them. We're making them our missions project. Amen. Brother Mike Musisi, who is also one of our members, just joined. And he's our cyber church member. And uh, he's an evangelist there in Uganda. And let's pray for our connection to Uganda. Amen. The Lord has blessed Zion City to have a connection in Uganda. Amen. And we are blessed to have a Ugandan member in our church uh, over. And he's, um, he's really taking the gospel. Amen. Over in his area, over there by storm, and he's representing uh, Zion City well so far. And we expect nothing less than the best of him. And we thank God for Brother Mike Musisi and the Children's Center over there. And so pray. God is doing miraculous things. It was prophesied some time ago uh, that this ministry would go international. Praise the Lord. And so God has done that. It's been by the hand of God. It's not by might. It's not by power. By the Spirit, said the Lord. So pray for that. Uh, our missions project to Uganda. Pray uh, for Zion City. Pray for the, for the fellowship service this Sunday at 7 at the Tabernacle. Amen. On the 4th. Amen. Pray uh, for the rest of the fast. Keep a prayerful spirit. Remember, no junk food, no fast food, no sweets. Limit your TV watching. Amen. Praise the Lord. And for those of you, who do, but hey, look, limit that phone conversation. Amen. Uh, Lamont, Lamont Sanford told Fred, stay off that phone. <laughs> Glory be to God. I love you. Mother Davidson, I love you. And uh, you'll see her on the Ustream next week. Pastor David's going to take a break. Praise the Lord. You'll see Mother Davis on the Ustream, and you're going to be hearing her voice a lot more. Amen. And uh, because this is this is this is a two way team. I ain't no one man show. Amen. Me and Mama do this thing together, and I love my wife. I thank God for the years that she stood by my side in ministry. We've been married uh, for over 18 years now. Amen. My baby boy is 14. My baby girl is nine. My oldest girl is 25. Six. 26. Uh, my oldest son is about 21. And my media, my, my middle boy uh, is 19, I do believe. Amen. So God has blessed us. I thank God for all of my godchildren, Lamont and Jaleesa and Marcellus and uh, Carolyn and all them. Praise God. I can't, I don't got, I don't got in trouble naming names. But we expect to see all of y'all this Sunday at 7 p.m. at the Tabernacle. Amen. And it's going to be a glorious time. All right, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This is Zion, and we are not afraid. The vision yet lives, and greater is here. God bless you. I love you. See you next time. Peace.